What must it have been like for this woman? A woman who had absolutely no hope left. Can you imagine what it would be like to be preparing your last meal? No local church pantries to turn to. No Salvation Army or Caritas to help out with the bills. You can't even turn to your neighbors because they're in the same boat as you are. It's just you and your son. And there's just a little bit of flour left in the house a few spoonfuls of oil. And so you're getting ready to prepare your last meal. And after that, you'll, you'll take your son and you'll hold him in your arms until starvation claims the both of your lives. What would it have been like? Hopelessness? despair, and resentment. What had she ever done to deserve this kind of treatment by the gods? That's how it was for this nameless widow. This woman who was gathering sticks for fire on this dry and dusty day. A day like every other day, every other day for months and months. The crops had failed. The animals were dying of starvation or thirst or both. That's how it was for this woman when she found herself looking into the eyes of a stranger. A stranger who was struggling with his own issues of hopelessness, despair, and resentment. But she couldn't have known that. She wouldn't have known just by looking at him that this man was wrestling with his notion of obedience to a God who had turned him into a fugitive living hand to mouth in this foreign territory of Canaan. She wouldn't have known that he probably spent the last day arguing with a God who had seemingly exiled him into this God-forsaken land and ordered him to demand shelter from this woman. She wouldn't have known how Elijah had told God, how can you ask, how can you tell me to ask her to give when she doesn't even have enough for herself and her son? Can't you send me to somebody who's wealthy, God? Someone who can afford to support me? Can't there be another way? She wouldn't have known all of that. All she knew was that she was close to death. And here was a stranger whose eyes were as gaunt as hers. And yet still had enough spirit within him to tell her not to be afraid. And he was asking for food and shelter. Here was a stranger along the path of life who needed help. And as she tried to describe her own situation, as she tried to explain that she wasn't any better off than he was, I wonder if she recognized the look within his eye a mixture of compassion and sympathy and pain. He no more wanted to ask this of her than the man in the moon. But God had demanded it of him. And he had learned a long time ago that he had no option but to obey God's commandments. And so he explained that if she could move past her fears, if she could draw on her reserves and muster up enough faith in his God, then she and her son would be saved from the famine. The Bible doesn't mention it, but I suspect that she hesitated. She had to think about it for a while. She wouldn't have known 
that by turning him away, by rejecting Elijah, that she would be signing her own death certificate and that of her sons. She wouldn't have known that by trying to preserve her own life and that of her sons, that she would have been hammering the nails into her own coffin and her sons. And yet she wouldn't have realized that through her obedience, by offering to Elijah her food and shelter, life would change for her in ways that she never would have imagined. For one thing, she would cultivate a relationship with this holy man that would share her home and her food. After years without an adult in the house, she would be able to have a conversation with someone other than her child. He would live with them. He would listen to her story and her struggles. He would share a bit about himself and his God. And gradually, she would return to the land of the living. And if she chose to obey Elijah's request, she couldn't have known that when he assured her that neither she nor her son would ever again experience the pangs of hunger, that they were words of divine truth and not the empty promise of a traveling huckster. And certainly, she wouldn't have known that by obeying Elijah, by offering him food and bringing him into her household, that one day, her son, her reason for living, would die. And this stranger would pray to his God, and that God would revive her son. She couldn't have known all of that when she made the most important and difficult decision of her life, that of obeying this stranger and offering her own food to him. And one more thing that she couldn't have known, and that was that her simple act of faith would provide a model of obedience for you and me more than 2,800 years later. 